All right, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about three gang box connections and how you terminate a three gang box. So make sure to stick around to find that out. Okay, this is a three gang box. Behind it, we have six mil vapor barrier plastic. We have our connections inside. Specifically, we wanna talk about the connections. Here we have a three way, we have a single pole, and we have another single pole. So, this is not a welded box. Uh, you can get these in a three gang welded box or you can get them in plastic. But in this situation, we're using a gangable box. And this way, uh, things can be changed down the road if they need to. So this is why we do this this way. In the back of the box, you're gonna see some grounds. These grounds are all connected together under each screw in the back. One, two, three, four. Those are also all twisted together with tails coming off. Those tails are to come out to the switches, which is a code requirement now. Secondly, we take all of our neutrals, our white wires, or our identified conductor, whatever you want to call it. We twist those all together and then put our marat on. Those should be twisted in a counterclockwise position, and then the marat should be turned on thoroughly so it doesn't come off. Your whites, or sorry, your blacks, Here's your black power feed. So we have some feeds in and some feeds out. So what this does is this power coming in from the panel, going back out to some plugs or some other lights or what have you. On the bottom of this, we have tails. These tails come off and they go to the switches. So you'll go one side of the switch and then the other side goes to the top of the switch. This here is a three-way. So we have the black common and the white and the red travelers. This is actually what we call a three-way tail. It's at the end of the line. I guess what's most important to talk about this, guys, is that you get everything bonded properly in the back of this box. So you need one, two, three, four, however many ground screws, you need to have them all tightened down, connected and twisted together. This ensures that there's a good bond in the back of the box. If you don't get that, then you can have issues. So make sure that that's done. Those are basically one of the configurations of a three gang box that, uh, that you can do. I'll show you a two gang box just to refer to it. So you can see the same thing in this two gang box. We have the two boxes together, our wires coming in the top, and then everything is looks like it's jumbled, but it's actually not. We shoved them back quite far during this process because we don't want the zip saw from the drywall tool to get back and nick our wires. But you can see all those grounds in the back are twisted together, and then the whites are all twisted together under the marrette, and then we have our tails coming off for each switch, and then the top of each uh, light goes out to the top. So those are some key important features to doing gangable boxes. Um, you can go with the welded style or the plastic style if you're certain that there's gonna be no changes. However, like I mentioned in the other videos, we use these boxes so it's quite easy to gang on one if the customer wants another one put on or they wanna change. Um, then we don't have to tear the whole box out and waste labor on tearing our, our connections apart. And that's the same with these loops on these wires here. We also put these loops on so that we can make adjustments to the box if we need to. Anyway, I hope you liked that short video on boxes and box connections. Uh, it's important to get your bonds together, like I mentioned, um, and make sure the box is securely fastened to the wall and fastened together if it's a selectable, gangable box, <coughs> and that everything is connected. Um, you don't want any bonding issues or grounding issues. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video, and thanks for watching today.